What you see here are three knives. Two of them are metal, they're Japanese, and one of them is obsidian. And I want to show in this video how people can use knives in their own way without having to be like trained like a chef or be told, okay, you have to use a certain knife in a certain way. You don't have to use a certain knife in a certain way. Now, I'm a tech geek and tech is not only technology in terms of um, in terms of uh, torches or computer or tablet or mobile but knives are also a form of technology and the in order to try and get across to people because we take so much for granted to realize how fortunate we are this is what the human ancestors used to cut up pages or whatever they needed, meat. This is one of the sharpest blades that you'll ever have on the planet. Um, I was able to do this, but it's not an arrowhead. I just, just like doing crazy things like this. I don't know if you can see the translucence. Yeah, maybe. Or even how sharp it is. But an obsidian blade is sharper than a metal knife. So what I have here is um, a Japanese, oops, a Japanese sashimi knife. They don't have to be expensive, but these are just super knives and you can use them in the kitchen and just develop your own technique. Not just cutting up veggies, just, oh, I get a knife and I go cut, cut up the veggies and, you know, whatever. But the, the, the knife is a lifelong tool. This, I think, is a santoko. And I sanded the... I'm still working on this. I just do this. I identify the knives from the handle. Because I've got quite a few, so I just look at the handle and pull it out. I know what that knife is. And so this is what I've got so far. So these are the two knives that I'm going to use to to show that you can just develop your own technique. It's a lot of fun. Obsidian blade, extremely sharp, very dangerous. I'm going to put this celery and I've got cucumber and tomato into I'm going to put it into some distilled water and leave it overnight. So but I'm doing this to show. So there you are, this is what you would be doing if you didn't have metal knives. But It's extremely effective. Okay. So that's my obsidian adventure. Just put that over there for a reference. Got a few more of them here, but I'll do that later. Maybe I might make a video about about obsidian. So let me just start with the, the 
a sashimi knife you now. I love knives and I collect them. And but I'm vegetarian, so sort of pretty much vegan, and I don't eat fish. I don't eat meat. No chicken, nothing. And really not cheese either. And so But I love I love work I love cooking. I love cooking because I love my knives. So probably if I didn't have these fantastic knives I'd probably not cook as much as I do. But here you are. And it's actually very effective and you just cannot hurt yourself. This is everything is clean, I washed all this and the table is clean, so there we are. Now, um, this is organic cucumber, so I can leave the I can leave the peel on. I just wash it with um, baking soda to clean off. And then this is just something that I do. Let me try and show. I just like to try new things. So there's my cucumber. And then I have tomato okay what I'm doing is I'm leverage I leverage the knife and that for me makes it safer and there's, there's no danger of cutting yourself um, you know and I'm not doing all this and then all this technique to move your fingers away if you leverage the knife it stabilizes the the leverage um, that you have for cutting. Okay, so try and do this. And so these knives are a lot. You can actually use a knife like this, a sashimi knife, to do edges. Now I have the smaller, the much smaller santuku, Japanese santuku, and this this is a very nice knife. You can do the same. I do the same with this. I can use it, just use it as a leverage. And the difference between this and the sashimi knife is you have this this curved blade and also the edge is thicker you have a much thicker edge and so once again you can see I'm just I just made this up. I mean, I cannot, I cannot cut like a chef, and I don't want to either. But um, the reason I'm doing this is to encourage people to just enjoy cooking, but also to respect the tools that they use. And and just go ahead and. Um, yeah, have fun in the kitchen, that it's not some kind of big job that you have to do and you think, oh God, I've got to go now and cut up all the veggies. But if you get yourself a really good knife, that really in the past the people formed a relationship with the knife because it wasn't so, you know, it wasn't just something you can pick up for, you know, a couple of, dollar a couple of euro and then once it's blunt you can throw it and pick up another one but um, 
but that it, it was a lifelong tool, a lifelong friend, and getting because getting another one was not that easy. So you can do the same with the you can do the same with the Santa Cruz, just leverage. And use, you can use this part of the knife effectively because most people do kind of like chopping at the front and I did for a long time too. But then I developed this technique that I use where I find this to be faster and I have more control over what the knife does in keeping my hand away from the blade. Because if you cut like this, you actually have to use more force and you have to like pay more attention because it does actually move around. The knife does move, you know, going like this. It's less safe than taking the back edge, levering the tip. And then you just move the the celery or whatever. And this actually, t using this part of the knife turns out to be quite fast and because you're secure. You feel secure about the movements that you're making because the knife isn't going to be moving around when you're using this leverage action. And then I've got the garlic that I... I sometimes sprout the garlic and then as it starts to grow I then get the... As the garlic starts to grow I... It forms flavour, it does... I don't put it in soil, I just um, grow it in a dish in water. And... Um, And uh, it gives it a different flavour when you activate the clove and it begins to grow again. Distilled water. I leave that overnight and then just drink it in the morning. You can, if you want, put it into the fridge. Depends on the temperature. If it's in the hot summer, then um, the, the the veg water will go into the distilled water faster than colder winter. <laughs> 